Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. So far we've been talking about creating building models in Revit. And these models are different from a normal model because they are information rich. But how do you extract this information out of this building model and put it into a tabular format with which you can use that information further for different use cases? Today in this episode we are going to talk about creating schedules in Revit. Schedules will take the information out of your building model and put it into a tabular format. This is the first step towards learning about model-based quantity takeoff. Let's begin. Now this is a sample residential design project that I'm going to use for this tutorial. I have three floors in this project and in each floor I have already modeled some of the doors. Now I want to create a door schedule that tells me which level has which type of door, how many, what are the widths, heights and head heights. Let's begin with that. So I'll go under view tab and under Create tab, you have something called schedules and click on the schedule or quantities. Now the first thing I want to do here is to select the category for which I would like to create a schedule. So I want to create a schedule of doors. So I will select the category doors. Name already comes automatically by default as door schedule. If you want to change this, you can always come here and change it. I just want to leave it as it is and I'm going to say OK. Next. These are the available fields which I can choose from and these are the scheduled fields. So the information that I want in my table, I would like to get it from left to right. Let's say the first thing I want to know is which level I have my door on. What is the name of the family? What is the name of the type? Then I also want to know what's the width, what's the height. Next, let's go ahead and choose head height. Now you can simply double click on this field to go make it go from left to right or you can select it and use this arrow keys here. How many of that particular instances of doors I have in my project so that's something called count. I'm going to take it on this side. This way you can take whatever information you want out of that component from left to right from available fields to schedule fields and I'm going to simply say OK to begin with. So here I have all my information extracted from my project into a tabular format. So each of these fields that we had chosen is the name of the heading. Currently it's itemizing every single instance into a separate row. Now let's take a step further and understand how we can group this information into more understandable format. So I'm going under sorting and grouping field. It's just the third field from the tab here that we started with. So I'm going back to sorting and grouping and I'm going to say sort by. Now here the title says sort by, but what it actually does is sort and group by. So let's sort and group by first level. So I want all the ground floor doors together, all the first floor doors together and so on. And once you have all those together, I want to then group it by name, by type of the door. If you want to itemize every instance, every single instance is going to have a separate row, which I don't want to do it at the moment. I want to group it based on the uh, levels that I have uh, provided here. And I also want to see the grand total. Let's see what these changes have an impact on our schedule. I'm going to say OK to this. So here you can see that now we have less number of rows because they have been grouped together. So we know that in the ground floor, the door entrance of 1.5 by 2.6 uh, type, there is one count, whereas the door single panel has nine counts. So there are nine instances of this particular type on ground floor. Same type of door is also available on first floor. There are five number of these doors. So this way this table is grouped by level and then by the type of door that we have. So I'm going back to the properties here and going and editing the formatting. Now this level field, which is repeating on every single row, I want this to be a hidden field. Now this change is going to happen by hiding the level. The level field is still scheduled. So if you go back to fields, you'll see that the level field is still scheduled. It's also used for sorting and grouping. It's simply hidden, but that doesn't serve our purpose because we want to know which doors belong to ground floor. So in this case, what I'm going to add is a header, maybe also a footer, which is going to tell us how many of those counts we have on each floor. And I'm going to say, OK, so you see here that we have a header saying ground level and a footer saying that a total 10 doors on ground level. Same thing here. 
So you can change the formatting and the appearance of your door schedule based on how you want this to be represented. Another interesting thing you can do in formatting is to change the name of your headings. For example, I would come here and say, I don't want to call this field count, but instead I want to call it total numbers. So if you go back to formatting and if you select this count parameter, you will see the heading changed to total numbers. So you can directly change it here or you can also come here under formatting and change it. So let's say go to head height and instead I'm going to call it lintel height. And I'm going to say OK. So you can see here that the heading has changed. Now we have the base of our door schedule. Let's put it on a sheet. So I'm going in my floor plan view and I'm going to simply drag and drop the schedule from my project browser over here. Now this particular sheet only has ground floor in it and my door schedule that I want on my sheet should only represent the doors on ground floor. How do I extract only the ground floor doors out of the schedule? Let's go back to the door schedule and filter the information that we want to show. So let's go ahead under edit and under schedule properties, how do I want to filter? I want to filter by level that equals to the name ground level. So you can add few more conditions here based on the and rule here. But for now, for me, it's adding level equals ground floor is enough. When I do this, you will see that all other doors which are not belonging to the ground floor has been hidden. Now, because this door schedule is only for the ground floor, I can simply go ahead and change the title. And I don't want to see the header and footer anymore because that is the only thing that's available here. So I'm going to go under sorting and grouping and remove the header. I am also removing the footer because I have the grand total at the bottom. Now here the grand total already says that there are 10 counts. Sometimes some people like to show the count under this total numbers field itself. If you want to do this, you can go back to your formatting, go to count and say calculate totals please. So this particular field, please count the total number of counts in here and I'm going to say OK. So this is going to show you the total number below the same field that you are calculating. Now let's go back to the sheet and you'll see that this has been updated and I can simply put it over here on my sheet. If you want to do the same thing for the first floor, instead of creating a new door schedule, I can go to the project browser, right click, duplicate this particular schedule. Let me increase my project browser size, rename this as first floor and then go back to my filter and change the filter from ground floor to first floor. So, so these doors are only belonging to the first floor. Same way you can further go ahead and duplicate it and call this all floors and remove the filter from your set. And if you're removing this filter and you are going to add all your doors, maybe you also want to add a header and footer under the level. I'm going to say OK. So this is the list of all the doors. Now, interesting thing about this schedule is that if you make any changes to your model, the schedule is going to update automatically. Let's go back to the floor plan here. Now, here you know that there is ground floor. There are 10 doors, nine of these and one of this. Now, if you I go back to my ground floor model and maybe add one more door of this kind, maybe somewhere around here, just to experiment. Here you'll see that automatically the schedule is updated to 11 doors. Same thing if I remove this particular door from my model, you will see the door schedule has been updated. Let's go back to this door schedule and here you will see that I have a door entrance 1.5 by 2.63, one number. I want to identify where is this component located. So I'm going to select it in my schedule and go ahead and highlight and model. What it's going to do is going to open up a view where this particular door is visible and selected. So I exactly know which component are we going to talk about. Let's try that again. Let's go back to the schedule and select all these nine doors from the schedule and highlight and model. When I do this, you will see that all the nine doors in the ground floor has been highlighted. I can simply go ahead and isolate this element to see them clearly. If I want to make any changes, I can always select that, make a change and so on. So it makes it quite easy to understand what's happening in the building model 
and what's happening in your schedule because they both are connected with each other. Now let's talk about the appearance of your door schedule on your sheet. If you go to your door schedules, there is a tab called appearance here. I'm going to go in edit mode. The settings available here is going to govern how your door schedule is appearing on your sheet. Is it going to have grid lines? Is it going to have an outline? Yes or no? If it's going to have an outline, how, uh, which line style is it going to use? Let's say I'm going to change it to wide line and I'm going to say OK to this. Let me close this ground floor and tile these two views. Now, if I zoom in here, you will see that the border of this schedule, the outline, is a little bit thicker because we chose a wide line for its line style. Let's go back to the door schedule, go to the appearance settings. Let's say I'm going to stripe the rows with a particular shade of blue. And I'm going to say OK. So you'll see that all the uh, rows are striped here. Let's go ahead and remove that stripe. And it's removed. Let's go ahead and change the appearance of our text. Let's say the title text is currently 2.5 millimeter aerial. I'm going to go back to my annotation, change my textiles, and add a few more, maybe a 5 millimeter aerial. So I have an additional textile 2.5 and 5. And now, if I go back to my door schedule, go to appearance, I have another textile available to me which I'm going to choose as 5mm. So my title text is going to be bigger. I'm going to say OK to this and you'll see how it changed its appearance. You can also change its appearance of the width of your columns by just simply selecting the sheet and changing these arrows to change the width of your columns. Now I have the schedule as my tabular format within Revit. So I have my information, but I want to share this information outside of this Revit and give it to my stakeholders in a format that which they can use. How do I extract this information and put it into a tabular format in like Excel or text or CSV file? So the first thing I want to do is open the store schedule that I want to export and then file, export, all the way down, reports, and schedule. And I'm going to put it on desktop as a CSV delimited file. I'm going to save it. It's going to ask you what kind of delimiter that you want to use. I'm going to use comma and I'm going to say OK to this. Let's go ahead and open this file. I'm going to open the CSV file in my Microsoft Excel. And I'm going to open this up from the desktop as Dole Schedules CSV file. And it's going to ask you whether this is a fixed width document or a delimited document. You're converting a CSV into an Excel. I'm going to next, instead of tab, I'm going to use comma, and I'm going to finish this. Now this entire schedule is available to you in an Excel format. You can save it. As an Excel workbook and use it further or share it with your other stakeholders. So the process of extracting information in a tabular format, such as schedules, is the same for all components. For example, you want to create a schedule of windows, furniture, air terminals, ducts, pipes, plumbing fixtures, uh, HVAC fixtures, any sort of uh, components in your Revit, the process is the same. You go into view, create a schedule, quantities, Choose the category of component that you want to use. For example, I want to take the quantity of structural framing out of this. Choose the information from the available fields and push it down to schedule fields. For example, I want to take the name of the family, name of the type, and how many of each type of beam that I have in my project. Once you have done this, go to sorting and grouping, itemize every instance, or do you want to group them with certain uh, particular parameter? Do you want to show grand totals or not? Do you have any changes in the formatting tab? Let's say I want to go in the count, calculate totals of my count. Do you have any changes in the appearance? To make these settings as per your requirements and say OK. And there you have your schedule available for your components. Now here in this particular case, I know what type of beam and how many of those components I have in my project. 
there are some concrete beams and some steel beams. In concrete beams, I also want to extract the information about the total volume of the concrete I'm going to use in my project. This is the second step towards model-based quantity takeoff, where I want to identify the quantity of my materials being used in the project. So that's going to be the topic for our next episode. We're going to talk about how to extract the material quantities from your project and put it on a schedule. So please make sure to subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.